how we know This is how we know what love is Just one look at your cross And this is where we see This is where we see how love works For you surrendered your all And this is how we know that you have loved us first And this is where we chose To love you in return For you so loved the world That you gave your only son Love amazing, so divine We will love you in return For this life that you gave For this death that you have died Love amazing Welcome to Connected Online Bible Study. My name is Sandra Hartage and I'm your teacher. I'm very thankful and grateful that you have uh, decided to participate in this study. I thank you that uh, the technology is working, that you can see it uh, recorded or in live mode. And I just pray that the Lord will bless our efforts as we study His Word. I pray He will open your heart and your mind to uh, that he speaks directly to you and through through the Holy Spirit uh, shows you something new and fresh by being here. Uh, I ask that you go to the Lord in prayer and let's ask him to bless our lesson. Most gracious Holy Father, what a marvelous, wonderful God you are. You are the creator. You are sustainer. You are our, our all in all. Father, you are almighty God. I thank you for your creation. I thank you for uh, the plan that you laid in place before the foundation of the earth, that you gave Jesus, your son, to die for our sins, that we might have eternal life. Father, I, I thank you that you design each and every life and that you have a very special purpose and task for us as your children to um, work for your kingdom. I pray that you will give us wisdom and understanding to know what that task is that we will grow in, in love and grow in, in faith as we walk daily uh, through, through this world. We love you, Lord, and we pray uh, that you will just bless this time that we have together. In Jesus' name, amen. In last week's lesson, we see that Joseph is lifted from prison and he is called before the presence of Pharaoh to interpret dreams that Pharaoh has had. Interestingly enough, Pharaoh could not interpret his own dream, and neither could his wise men, this guild of magicians that were skilled in the art of dream interpretation. They could not, they could not interpret the dreams of Pharaoh. Uh, God himself had closed their minds closed their understanding because he had a plan. In the presence of Pharaoh, Joseph makes a statement that all of, all of the court would have heard. And he said, God can interpret Pharaoh's dreams. I cannot. So Joseph was a witness wherever he went. He lifted up the Lord's name whenever he had a chance. Joseph interprets the dreams of Pharaoh, giving credit to God himself. And he is placed in a position as vizier of Egypt. Now remember that he was in prison. This was a Hebrew boy that served in the house of Potiphar, went to prison for a crime uh, he did not commit, and now is in front of uh, Pharaoh and is made vizier of all Egypt. We're talking about the second in command underneath Pharaoh. So he was given all of these responsibilities. How will God enable him to do that? Did God provide Joseph with skills that he could use uh, even during the time when he was a boy in, in uh, Canaan? Did he provide him skills that he could use when he was in Potiphar's house? 
Did he give him skills that he could use in prison that would serve him as he is vizier and as he has been given the responsibility to save Egypt and save the surrounding uh, lands, including his own family, from famine that was to come? Join us in tonight's lesson and see. The Nile River is 4,184 miles long. With such a long length, the Nile River is speculated to be the longest river in the world. The Nile River has played an extremely important role in the civilization, life, and history of Egypt. One of the most well-known river Nile facts is the river's ability to produce extremely fertile soil, which made it easy for cities and civilizations to spring up alongside the banks of the Nile. The growing season was usually from October to February. As soon as the flood began to recede, the ancient Egyptians plowed the soil ready for sowing. They had hand plows and larger ones that were pulled by oxen. Seeds were then sown into a newly plowed soil. Goats and other animals then walked over the field to push the seeds into the ground. Crops grown included wheat, barley, flax, onion, leek, garlic, beans, lettuce, lentils, cabbage, radishes, turnips, grapes, figs, plums, and melons. Harvest usually was between March and May. Grain was cut using a sickle. The cut grain was then tied into bundles and carried away. Wheat was made into bread. Barley was made into beer. Flax was made into linen cloth. Papyrus reeds that grew naturally along the banks of the Nile were used to, to make sandals, boats, baskets, mats, and paper. Fruit and vegetables were harvested as they ripened. Here you see a diagram of the rooms for housing the grain. Apparently they were vaulted, and you'll notice the great number of them, upper and lower storage. Storing the harvest and quality control. Note the scribe and the driver with a whip. This was, a, was from a tomb at Beni Hassan in Egypt. Another diagram of the storage. Workers carry grain into silos while scribes register the amount. This is an example of some of those granary halls that uh, we just saw them adding grain to. Still in existence, parts of it and they have excavated uh, grain storage bins and you can see there how deep those were and how much grain those would have held. Another example of some grain storage buildings in Egypt. And then this diagram is a grain accountant that was found on the tomb of uh, a pharaoh. Here is a storage um, picture of a scribe checking the storing of raisins. So they kept very close, detailed inventories of every single uh, crop that they had. Genesis 41, 46. Joseph was 30 years old when he entered the service of, of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and Joseph went out from Pharaoh's presence and traveled through Egypt. Genesis 41, 47 through 49. During the seven years of abundance, the land produced plentifully. Joseph collected all the food produced in those seven years of abundance in Egypt and stored it in the cities. In each city, he put the food grown in the fields surrounding it. Joseph stored up huge quantities of grain, like the sand of the sea. It was so much that he stopped keeping records because it was beyond measure. So Joseph's plan for the years of plenty was to travel the land, first of all, and become familiar with the people in the land, and then to begin collecting food from the surrounding fields and storing it in cities that had these huge granaries uh, so that that would be available to the people later. And he kept detailed records of all the quantities of grain until it became so great that it could not be measured. Genesis 41, 50. Before the years of the famine came, two sons were born to Joseph by Ashnath, daughter of Potiphera, priest of On. 
Genesis 41, 51, and 52, Joseph named his firstborn Manasseh and said, It is because God has made me forget all my troubles and all my father's household. The second son he named Ephraim and said, It is because God has made me fruitful in the land of my suffering. Manasseh, who was the older son of Joseph, was the ancestor of the tribe of Israel, Manasseh. Manasseh was adopted by Jacob as equal to his own sons, therefore uh, receiving all of the inheritance uh, rights of a son. As Manasseh's tribe grew, it was the only tribe that settled on both sides of the Jordan River. Manasseh means to forget all my troubles. And in Numbers 26, census for Manasseh recorded 52,700 men who were 22 years of age and older. Ephraim was the younger son of Joseph. His ancestors were the tribe of Ephraim. Jacob blessed Ephraim first, saying he would become a greater nation than Manasseh. He, he had crossed his hands over, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, but he had crossed his hands over and blessed the younger son over the older son. Ephraim was also adopted by Jacob as equal to his own sons. Ephraim's name means fruitful. Numbers 26 census recorded Ephraim as having 32,500 men who were 22 years of age and older. And in Chronicles of the tribes, Ephraim takes precedent over Manasseh in all matters. So Jacob's blessing and pronouncing of Ephraim over Manasseh was proven. Manasseh means, it is because God has made me forget all my trouble in all my household. Ephraim, it is because God has made me fruitful in the land of my suffering. Interestingly, these names that Joseph has given his two sons reflect Joseph's attitude as he has now accepted God's plan for what it is for his life. God has made him forget all about his troubles at this point. He has made him forget about the, the trouble that he had with his family. Genesis 41, 53 through 54. The seven years of abundance in Egypt came to an end, and the seven years of famine began just as Joseph had said. There was famine in all the other lands, but in the whole land of Egypt, there was food. Genesis 41, 55. When all Egypt began to feel the famine, the people cried to Pharaoh for food. Then Pharaoh told all the Egyptians, go to Joseph and do what he tells you. When the famine had spread over the whole country, Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold grain to the Egyptians, for the famine was severe throughout Egypt. And all the world came to Egypt to buy grain from Joseph because the famine was severe everywhere. We're going to jump over to Genesis 47, verses 13 through 26, so we can see how Joseph administers the uh, responsibilities that he's been given in providing food for, for hungry people. In 13 and 14, it says, there was no food, however, in the whole region because the famine was severe. Both Egypt and Canaan wasted away because of the famine. Joseph collected all the money that was to be found in Egypt and Canaan in payment for the grain they were buying, and he brought it to Pharaoh's palace. When the money of the people of Egypt and Canaan were gone, all Egypt came to Joseph and said, Give us food. Why should we die before your eyes? Our money is all gone. And so Joseph says in verses 16 through 17, Then bring your livestock. I will sell your food in exchange for your livestock since your money is gone. So they brought all their livestock to Joseph, and he gave them food in exchange for their horses, for their sheep and goats and cattle and donkeys. And he brought them through that year with food in exchange for all their livestock. Verse 18. When the year was over, they came to him the following year and said, We cannot hide from our Lord the fact that since our money is gone and our livestock belongs to you, there is nothing left for our Lord except our bodies and our land. 
Why should we perish before your eyes, we and our land as well? Buy us and our land in exchange for food, and we with our land will be in bondage to Pharaoh. Give us seed so that we may live and not die, and that the land may not become desolate. Verses 20 and 21. So Joseph bought all the land in Egypt for Pharaoh. The Egyptians, one and all, sold their fields because the famine was too severe for them. The land became Pharaoh's, and Joseph reduced the people to servitude from one end of Egypt to the other. Genesis 47:22. However, he did not buy the land of the priest, because they received a regular allotment from Pharaoh and had food enough from the allotment Pharaoh gave them. That is why they did not sell their land. Verses 23 and 24. Joseph said to the people, Now that I have bought you and your land today for Pharaoh, here is the seed for you so you can plant the ground. But when the crop comes in, give a fifth of it to Pharaoh. The other four fifths you may keep as seed for the fields and as food for yourself and your household and your children. Genesis 47 verses 25 and 26. You have saved our lives, they said. May we find favor in the eyes of our Lord. We will be in bondage to Pharaoh. So Joseph established it as a law concerning land in Egypt, still in force today, that a fifth of the produce belongs to the Pharaoh, and it was only the land of the priest that did not become Pharaoh's. As we look at the life of Joseph, let's look at some specific skills, personality traits, and moral traits that Joseph had that would have carried him through the times of, of toil and trauma and, and from being in Potiphar's house, be, being sold by his brothers, prison, all those things that happened to Joseph in his life. So as we look at his personality and moral traits, we know that through the years, Joseph was trustworthy, he was honest, he had integrity. He was very handsome. In fact, um, there are only two others that uh, were described as handsome uh, in the Bible, and that's David and his son Absalom. He had high morals. He was a quick and diligent student, very compassionate. He had very good listening skills, listening to others. He was humble, and most of all, he was strong in his faith to God. So as we examine the learning lessons that Joseph has had, let's take a look at some of the things he might have learned when he was living at home in Canaan with his father Jacob and his brothers. He certainly would have learned about the faith of Abraham, the God of Abraham and the promises God had given to Abraham. He would have known those. He would have learned courage and some compassion, uh, although I think his compassion was probably on a learning scale as well, and uh, he grew in compassion as, as seen in the time when he was in prison. He learned about negotiating skills because he was given um, the responsibilities of buying and selling, and he would have learned a very valuable skill uh, by observing his father. He had a good work ethic. He had good moral values. He knew what was right, and he stuck to it and he had a desire to learn, which was valuable to him in learning a new language and those other skills. And he had extensive knowledge of farming and caring for animals uh, in the, the large herds and the large uh, livestock and so forth that Jacob had. Uh, and he would have had on-the-job training there even as a small child in, in working with his, his livestock. Joseph also learned valuable skills in Potiphar's house. He learned to read, to write, and to speak Egyptian. He learned the customs and the lifestyles of Egypt, including the etiquette of royalty. He learned about uh, the Egyptian accounting skills and practices. He would have learned about supervisory skills. He was placed over the house of Potiphar, so he would have learned how to um, be in a supervisory role. He would have learned some of the agricultural aspects of just being in charge of the, of the food and growing of food and gardens and livestock that Potiphar had. 
negotiating skills and trading for all the goods that he was responsible for in Potiphar's house. He would have learned inventory management because he had to account for every single thing and he had to give not only the livestock and the food that came into the house, everything dealing with Potiphar's estate. He would have had to give accounting for that so he had to know what he had. And he also learned a very valuable lesson in, in resisting temptation. The skills he learned and lessons he learned in prison added to the ones he had already attained both at home and in Potiphar's house. But he learned to express empathy for others, listening to them, uh, those listening skills coming into play again. Faith in God, no matter what the circumstances were, he was in prison and he was at the bottom, almost as bad as being in the pit. But he, he learned to walk in faith with, with God and no matter what circumstances he was in. He also learned the workings of the palace. He, he learned about the customs of the court and he learned about Egyptian law. Everyone that came into the prison was there for a reason. He learned those listening skills. He honed those listening skills. He learned, he continued to learn patience. And he also sharpened his administrative skills because he was, he was placed over the prison and over taking care of uh, everything concerning the prison uh, just underneath the warden. Joseph is given the job of vizier. Now the vizier's duties and responsibilities were great. All of those things he had been learning from home to Potiphar's house to the prison were now going to be put in a place that he would use those skills as well as building on those things that he had learned. He would be learning new things. He was in charge of the following. He was Lord of Pharaoh's house and chief steward of the king. That meant Pharaoh's personal estate and safety and well-being of him as well. He was ruler throughout all of the land of Egypt. He was second in command, remember, to Pharaoh. He was chief record keeper, keeping all the government records, making sure that the government records were, were kept in place. He was supervisor of the government in general. He was also a chief justice. He was responsible for uh, appointing officials to all of these government offices, lower officials. He, was, he also controlled access to the person of Pharaoh. He was a general supervisor of construction work and industry in Egypt's state-run economy. Now, this would also involve perhaps even building storage facilities or perhaps even pyramids as well. He was the agricultural czar, meaning that he was over production, harvesting, and all of the royal granaries and all forms of, of agriculture, including suggestions in making things better agriculturally. He was uh, also over agricultural reform. So we can see this life of Joseph. He has been plummeted finally to the position that God had for him because now he would have uh, the authority that he needed to save people from the coming famine, the lives of those people, and to build the uh, Egyptian economy and to, uh, to build also the government of uh, Egypt because when the famine hit, people then began to sell their livestock. They began to sell themselves and their land. So at the end of the famine, Pharaoh, who was the supreme ruler of Egypt, now owns not only all the livestock in the land, but he also owns all of the people and all of the land. What came about then from this was the fact that now we have a small group, a small family, 150 people, coming up from Canaan and living in Goshen, where they will be protected, where they will be nurtured, where they will grow to a large nation all under the protection of God Almighty and to carry out God's plan for them. Thank you for joining us for tonight's lesson. We just uh, pray that the Lord has blessed you and that He's given you an insight into the life of Joseph and how it applies to your life.
In looking back at Joseph's life, we can see where God had trained him in various uh, tasks and skills um, that he intended for Joseph to use for the saving of many lives. Your life may not be as dramatic as that, but God has given you a very special talent, a gift that He has provided that He expects you to use for His kingdom. No one else can do the job that He has given you to do. Isn't it wonderful that God plans out every single detail of our life and He gives us the choice to be part of that, a part of His plan, or to go our own way. So I pray that as you look at your own life, that you will begin to recognize some of the things that God has been teaching you all along for, uh, for a place in His kingdom to do something for Him. When we're in a situation, we don't always understand why that it's happening to us, but rest assured that God does. He knows exactly why that you're there. You can either feel sorry for yourself uh, you can decide that you wish to be a witness to others uh, in how that you react to situations. God knows what's going on in your life. Uh, he has planned for you to have experiences and opportunities to prepare you for a special something, whatever that may be. And it may not it may not be a one-time thing. It may be something that um, that will last you through many many years. Joseph's time in preparation for the the job that God had for him lasted many many years until Joseph died. So um, it it's not going to be something that happens and then it's over. Uh, God will use you until you die uh, as a I heard a sermon that uh, said that just to keep going to your gone. God expects you to live your life until it's over, until He calls you home. And He wants you to live it in His strength, in His, His might, and with uh, the leading of the Holy Spirit. You do that by prayer. You do that by listening very carefully what God has to tell you and um, he, will, he will give you the strength to do whatever task that He has for you. I pray the Lord will continue to bless you uh, and continue to give you insight into His, His um, will for you. Uh, I pr also pray that you will be able to join us in the chat room right after this lesson. It's a way that we can discuss and talk about the things from, from this particular lesson. Uh, all you have to do is to click on the red check in and chat button below the player. Uh, I will be there ready to uh, ask some questions and listen and give responses. Uh, and I hope that you will take the time to participate in this part of the lesson because it's just a way that we can share what God has taught us. Thank you for joining us. Be with us next week when we will see that uh, Joseph will have an encounter with his brothers. Let's see how he handles that.